All right, so we have covered almost everything related to queries. In one of the videos at the very beginning, I had briefly covered what a mutation was. So anything that's related to fetching data from the server can be handled by queries. Creating, updating or deleting data on the server should be handled by mutations. React query has a hook for it called use mutation. So let's see how we can use it in our application. Before that, we'll need to create a backend server for this because JSON placeholder won't let you post data, at least not on the one that's hosted online. So let's quickly create an express server. Inside the root directory, I'll create a folder called server. I'll initialize a node module by typing in pnpm init inside this server. Let's install express and cores for this node module. Inside this folder, I'll create an app file, which is going to be our main server file. Now inside this file, I'll just paste some code. Now this is a typical express server. I'll just take you through what all we have inside this file. We are importing all the required modules that we need. So course express, then we create an express instance. This tasks array that you see here is a dummy database. This is what we are going to use for this example. I'm not going to create a proper database for this because that's just not in the scope for this tutorial. So you can just imagine that this is going to act like a regular database. Then we have a couple of endpoints. The first root endpoint is just going to send you hello world. This is a dummy endpoint. Then we have an endpoint to get all the tasks from this so-called database. We have an endpoint to add a task, which is essentially going to just push the task to this array database. And we also have a delete endpoint, which is going to delete the specific task based on the ID that we get from this dynamic query param. Finally, we are just listening for any requests on this port 3000. So yeah, that's just a very typical straightforward Node.js application. If you have any questions regarding this, you can put them in the comments. I'll happily answer those questions. Now inside the React app, I'll create a new route for the tasks UI. So all the tasks that we are going to display, the form that we are going to show to add a task, all of those things will be inside this new route. So let me just go to the main.js file and I'll simply create a new route. Inside the pages folder, I'll create a component for this tasks route. So let me import the component inside this file. Now, since this component is going to be similar to what we already have in our pages folder, I'll be copying the code here directly and I'll take you through the essentials that we're going to have inside this file. So again, it's a pretty straightforward UI component. We have a fetcher function that is going to get us all the tasks. So we are just making an API call to our local Node.js server. Then we have the main tasks component. It has two state items for the title and description. Both of these are hooked to the form that we have over here. So we have two input fields. One will take the title for the task and the second one is going to take the description. So both of these are mapped to the use state items that we have here. Then we have the query to get the tasks. Nothing fancy here. Then we have two functions. One function is going to deal with deleting the tasks from the list and the other one is going to handle the addition of tasks inside the list. And finally, we have the JSX here, which displays the form as well as the list in a fancy way. Let me just save this and I'll go back to the browser. Obviously, we won't see anything here because we haven't started the server yet. So I'll open up another instance of the terminal. I have Nodemon installed globally. So that's what I'm going to use to serve this node application. I recommend you to install it. So it's just going to be pnpm add Nodemon. Let me just serve the app file. And yeah, we have it on port 3000. Now, if I go back, you'll see these two tasks here. I actually was planning to change the background color to a more lighter shade. Yeah, let me do that. Now that we are set, let's see how we can use the use mutation hook in here. It's actually pretty straightforward. The use mutation hook has one mandatory property, unlike use query, which had two. So for use mutation, you only need to have a mandatory mutation function. This mutation function will take the handle add function that we have created over here. So let me just create the mutation. I'll call it add mutation and we'll use the use mutation hook. 
mutation function is going to be handle add. I'll also change the on click event handler instead of directly calling the handle add function. I'll use the mutate method that's present on the add mutation instance that we just created. It will in turn call the mutation function, which is the handle add function. Now, if you take a look at this mutation instance, you'll see a lot of states and methods similar to a query instance. I'll use the is pending state at the top just to keep track of the asynchronous operation. So right above the form, let me just create a paragraph tag and inside here, I'll use add mutation dot is pending. Now, if I go back to the browser and try to add a task to the list, let's just type in test one dummy description. You'll see at the top here by default, the is pending state for that mutation is set to false. When I click on the submit button, it's going to turn into true. I'm not sure if you're able to see the Twitch here, but since we are on a very fast network, it turned to true and it turned right back to false in like a split second. Let me just slow down the network and do this once again. I'll change the text here to something else and let me click on submit. Now you see that it's true for a while and then it again turns to false. So while the mutation was running, which is basically the async operation, this is pending state was set to true and once it was done, it was set back to false. Inside the React Query Dev Tools, you will see a mutation registered on this particular date and time. Yeah, we have two mutations here. The details over here are again very similar to what we saw for queries. Variables will have details related to any arguments that you provide to the mutation function. For instance, if I just pass like any random argument inside the mutate function, let's just pass like an object and I'll save this. Now, if I run this mutation once again, if you check the variables inside this mutation, you will find whatever I passed inside the arguments. The context will not make sense to you right now, but in the next video, when we look at optimistic updates, this will make much more sense. So I'll come back to it later. Everything else is more or less the same as what we saw in the queries section. So I'll close this. Now, one thing you'll notice is whenever I click on the submit button, the new task that we have added in the input and the description is not being added right away. The API call was made, but still the task did not get added to the list. That's because the task query still has the old cache data. This time we know for a fact that on API success, a new task is added to the database. So a refetch needs to happen. So what we'll do is we'll just manually do a refetch by using the invalidate queries method present on the query client. I'll use the use query client hook to get the query client. And inside the mutation instance, I have an option to provide a callback when the mutation is successful. Let's just use on success and inside this callback, I'll simply use the query client instance to invalidate the tasks query. Let me just save this. Now, if I try to add this task, actually, let me create a new task, task three test. If I click on submit, the new task should be added to the list right away. Once the API call is made. Yeah, you can see here. So yeah, with that, we have a basic mutation example ready. In the next video, we'll take the optimization one step further and try to optimistically update the UI on a mutation. I'll explain everything related to optimistic updates over there. So do subscribe for that. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.